This is the the, the meeting of the public accounts committee uh, order. Bring the meeting to order. Um, I'm going to just remind members that mobile phones must be set to airplane mode or turned off. It's not sufficient to put mobile phones on silent mode as they continue to interfere with the assembly recording. The session is being recorded in video and audio and can be accessed via uh, online streaming and the assembly website or Democracy Live. Um, okay, we're in public session, so agenda item one is apologies. Uh, apologies from um, any members? Mr. Boylan and Mr. McHugh. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> agenda item two then is the minutes of the meeting of the 14th of January 2021, pages six to ten of your pack. Uh, and the minutes of the 14th of January 2021 are in your pack. Are members content that I sign those minutes? Great. Okay, thank you. Um, agenda item three then is declaration of uh, members' interests. Members at each meeting, members are required to register relevant financial and other interests in members' interests. Does any member have any interest in want to declare this afternoon? No, thank you. Um, agenda item four then, matters arising. I refer to correspondence from Sue Gray, page three of your table pack, confirming her attendance for the 4th of February to continue her evidence on the Northern Ireland Audit Office report on the capacity and capability in the closed session. Members agreed to note. Okay. Correspondence. I understand from the clerk there is no correspondence. Okay. Um, agenda item six then is uh, ministerial direction. Uh, members, the, uh, this is around the reimbursement of wages to healthcare workers, pages 15 to 19 of your pack. And at this stage, I would invite Mr. Kieran Donnelly and Mr. Kyle Bingham, uh, Assembly Support Officer, to the table. I refer to your correspondence, Mr. Donnelly, the Controller and Order General. Dated the 18th of January 2021, in your packs, pages 15 to 19, from the Permanent Secretary of the Department of Health, outlining a ministerial direction in respect of a decision to reimburse lost wages by healthcare workers during strike action. Uh, members are referred to page 19 of your pack, Appendix 1, which sets out the background of this spend. Uh, healthcare workers undertook three days of strike action in December 2019 and January 2020. In March 2020, it was announced that the wages lost uh, as a result of the strike would be reimbursed. The estimated total cost to Northern Ireland purse is £1.64 million. Uh, members, the Executive has agreed to this proposal in a letter of the 9th of January 2021, at pages 16 to 17 of your pack, from the Minister of Health. Uh, Mr. Donnelly, Mr. Bingham, good afternoon to the meeting. Um, would you um, please take the committee through the ministerial direction, Mr. Donnelly? Uh, this is a fairly straightforward one. Uh, the uh, accounting officer um, was of the view that uh, you couldn't justify our, a business case for the payment of strike pay. I suppose uh, the main just of the, the argument was was this set a, a precedent uh, for other cases? Uh, the department did get legal advice, uh, which, uh, which provided a bit of comfort, but I think the accounting officer still felt he, he would seek a, a direction. So it's, it's, this one is quite, quite clear cut. Is there any question? Mr. Muir? It would affect me because my mother is a health care worker. Okay. Although there's no direct benefit no. to you? No. Okay. Um, any other member, any question? Content? Good afternoon. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay, then moving forward. Um, um, in terms of um, agenda item seven and eight, um, I want to just um, Advise the committee has unanimously agreed to seek um, further clarification, and therefore there uh, will be a deferral on a um, pending clarification on a number of issues in terms of the inquiry. Um, members content? Uh, agreed. Thank you very much. So the generation of electricity from renewable energy inquiry will be deferred for a sh short time to allow some clarification uh, to be sought and given. Thank you. Okay. Um, uh, 
Okay. Agenda item nine then is the forward work program, which is in your pack, pages 117, 118, 119, and through to 238, uh, in terms of Justice Committee correspondence. Um, and I would invite Mr. Donnelly to remain at the table. Members, last week we noted correspondence from the Justice Committee dated the 17th of December, pages 119 to 238 of your pack regarding legal services agency LSA concerning the issue of the agency's accounts being qualified for a considerable number of years. The Justice Committee suggests uh, uh, PAC carry out a further inquiry into managing legal aid uh, on. Uh, from the PAC's 2017 report, the Legal Services Agency, the LSA Northern Ireland Annual Report and Accounts for year ending the 31st of March 2020 are also included in this correspondence. Due to the new health protection coronavirus restrictions, number two amendment regulations and constraints on officials and departments will need to uh, look uh, at our forward work program, program to amend what is necessarily deemed to be essential business. Uh, undertaking a new inquiry into managing the aid may not be uh, a priority. Um, Mr. Donnelly, is controller in order to general give any comment on that? Uh, no, I, uh, I've qualified my opinion on the accounts of the agency, really almost from the creation of the entity. Um, before the agency was created, back in the day, it was the Law Society that actually administered legal aid payments. Uh, and my qualification was really on, on two grounds um, over the years. It was just the, you know, the lack of counter-fraud controls, number one, uh, and number two was the, the lack of arrangements for actually assessing legal aid provisions. Uh, so there, there was always difficulty over the years in getting a grip on the, the legal aid budget. Uh, a decision would be made to support particular cases. Uh, but tracking the expenditure in those was quite difficult. Often uh, invoices from law firms were sent in uh, in bulk, you know, many years after a, a case had been approved. Uh, what I can say is, uh, although I've qualified this account uh, for many years, uh, my qualification last year was wasn't as critical as earlier qualifications, uh, and uh, at least on one of the counts uh, on the provisions, I think we can see uh, um, a possibility that that could be lifted uh, next time around. So the accuracy of the provision figure is uh, it's not there yet, but it's an awful lot better than it was uh, a few years ago. Uh, on the, the fraud thing, um, one of the, your predecessor's uh, recommendations was that there would be a statutory registration scheme for uh, solicitors administering legal aid. So uh, if you want to you know, avail of legal aid in Northern Ireland, you can go to any solicitor. There is no st registration scheme uh, for solicitors. That, that's a long-standing recommendation, uh, and uh, I think that, so. We'll need legislation to move on that. Uh, I suppose my suggestion is: uh, your predecessors have looked at this uh, area twice, actually, over the years. Um, it has improved, uh, but there may be an option to, to actually for you to write out to the uh, to the department uh, to get an update on outstanding issues. Uh, in the first instance, and then uh, you, when that comes in, then you can further consider if anything else needs to be done. Okay. Any member, any question on that? Or are you content? Content? Yeah, sure. So how many, what, are there any years where you haven't qualified the accounts? Uh, I'm trying to think. <laughs> it's, it must be nine or ten, right from really the word go. Uh, so. Uh, but what I can say is the, the problems were much more serious back in time, uh, and there has been improvement. Uh, so while I still have the qualification, I'm closer to lifting at least one of the qualification counts. The qualification is now, in some part, due to a structural issue to do with the design of the delivery of legal aid as much as the behaviour and practice of individuals in the legal services agency? Well, it's how the business is run is one dimension of it. And uh, when the agency, when your predecessors took evidence uh, back in 17, uh, just the whole 
managerial setup in the agency was scrutinised. Uh, and uh, what I can say is there's a stronger senior team in there than there was uh, a number of years ago. So that, that's another positive. <clears throat> Members, can I just point out that um, if you're content, we will write to the Department of Justice for an update on how it's progressing with the recommendations um, in terms of managing legal aid. And if you recall, the committee agreed to seek a further update in February 2020 biannually until it was satisfied that the sufficient progress had been made against those recommendations. Okay. Is that all right? Everyone content? Okay. Thank you. Members, I refer to the forward draft pro uh, work programme in your packet 117 to 118, covering a period of January to the end of March 2021. The team in Northern Ireland Office have compiled a list of Northern Ireland Office current and forthcoming reports that may be useful to make some future decisions. Uh, are you content that we look at next week's meeting and decide how we're going to do business during COVID and the COVID regulations? Um, members, any comments? Okay. Um, and therefore, can I ask the clerk to take us through the formal work programme? Any changes that we need to note or make uh, next week? Uh, we will have evidence session for our fifth inquiry. Okay, I think just the, uh, thank you, Chair. The, the main thing, really, just to note is um, that the, um, the generating renewable energy inquiry um, has been deferred, and um, I'll come back um, yeah. with a new date to propose when I have more information. Okay. Members content? Members, any comments? Okay. Um, okay. Agenda item 10 then is um, any other business? Any other business? Okay. Um, uh, before we uh, agree on the date and time and place of the next meeting, I would just ask that the meeting could, for a short period, go into closed session. Is that okay, Clark? This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly Plenary Programme signed. This is